Hi everyone. So today's tutorial is going to be using NGUI inside of Unity and allowing you to create a UI that's resolution independent. So by that I mean it will work at this resolution, it would work at this resolution, and then if we go a little wide, a little wider screen like this, it would work at this, and basically it would keep your UI elements anchored in any corner or center or center of the screen, lower left, lower right, anywhere that you want them. And basically allow you to in your applications to support any resolution, any aspect ratio on a device and using NGUI. So what I have in here is a folder just called Art Assets, and it's just got a couple of just simple graphics in here, camera button, pause button, respawn, and these are just kind of sample ideas what you might have in your in your GUI over your game. And then I have the NGUI and the plugins folder. Um, you just import in your NGUI package. I move these folders around in my project to allow me to use JavaScript in my project. Um, this relates to script compilation order. Um, by default it works with C Sharp out of the box, but you have to move the folders around a little bit to get JavaScript functionality um, working for you. And you can Google and find information on that pretty quick. Also, since this is geared for mobile, I just went and switched platform and made my target Android, but this also works for iOS too. The principle is exactly the same, setup's exactly the same, but we'll test with Android today since um, I've been, you know, doing a, quite a bit of Android development lately. So we'll go to a pretty standard Android resolution, 800 by 480, and now we want to make our resolution independent UI. So we have our neat little NGUI um, tab up here, and the first thing we want to do is make an atlas. Now this is one of the great things of NGUI is it allow you to keep your UI to one draw call. So it'll let you save all of your draw calls for the important stuff, which is you know your car driving through your game, or your character running through your world, and all of the things going on in your game that are really important. And UI is important, but you don't want to waste a bunch of draw calls. Where if I just put these in as GUI textures, you'd have four draw calls for the four different textures. We're going to create an atlas using NGUI and it's going to put them all on one texture and one material and um, that's going to allow us to keep it to one draw call. So what we want to do is shift select all of the UI things that you want to put on one atlas and don't try to cram um, too many onto um, one atlas like all of your stuff that's your in-game HUD stuff maybe put that on one um, Atlas and then your stuff in your menus, like your buttons in your menus outside of your game, put those on a different atlas or whatever, you know, since they're going to be probably in a different scene. So we'll call this in game HUD or something. Let us know that these this is going to be the atlas for our overlay in game. And then we just hit create. Okay. And then it also says, oh, we got this other thing going on here. Don't forget to save the scene to write the changes. So that's important. After you create your atlas, I always save. And I have my little scene right here I'm saving. So we've created the atlas and we can close this. And when I look up here in Art Assets, we see a new material, a new prefab, and a new texture. And there are all of those four individual textures all mapped onto a 512 by 512 right there. So pretty neat. And there's the prefab for it and there's the material for it. So now we want to start creating some buttons and creating the UI. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually create a new UI layer. Um, you want to make a layer called UI, and you can just go click that Add Layer button, and I manually typed in UI here. So just could be on any one of these. Just make sure you have one called UI, and then set your UI to it. Simple 2D is good enough for what I want to do. I'm using 2D sprites for the UI and HUD stuff. So let's create it. Okay, and there we see this purple box, which is basically our panel or our viewable screen area. So I'm only going to change a couple things. At the UI root, I'm going to turn off automatic because I want to control all of the scaling and all of that where things are anchoring everything. And I'm just going to change the minimum height to um, 600. And so these numbers out of the box seem to work okay for me. Um, you can change them and adjust them for your own project. I'm going to save again. So there's our UI, and we want to put some of our buttons inside of this panel here, this purple box. 
So what we'll do is open up the MGUI panel again and we want to create a widget, which are what buttons and texts and basically everything in your UI would be. We want to make sure we're using our in-game HUD atlas and we'll create a button. Type a button. Okay. And then we'll let's just select that. And then we'll click add to panel. And then we can close that out. I don't know why this is happening. Sometimes it does. Um, it's kind of scaled funky and out of place. So I just look at the size here. And so we fix the box collider. And then right here, and I don't really have a clue why that happens. And just to be safe, we click that. And so we see our collider is on the button. And the button's there. It has a background. It should actually have some action already when we hit play. And wait for my slow machine. Yep, there it goes. It's scaling and it's changing color to green, which is normal. The button has UI button scale, which shows if you hover over it, it scales up this much. If you press it, it scales this much. And then it has a scale for press. <coughs> it has an offset, which I usually remove. You don't need it. And then a UI button sound. If you want it to play a sound, you click it. And then this is what's turning it green and all that jazz right here. Okay, so this is the button with the collider, and then this is the uh, the actual sprite. So let's get to the important part, which is the anchoring. So what I'm going to do is rename this turn right button, and um, I'm going to hit Control D. And snap it over down a little bit by holding control down when I move it. I'm going to call this one turn left. And I'm going to go into the sprite itself. And da -da -da -da. Make it negative 150. And this way we have an arrow going left and an arrow going right. Now I'm going to zero out these. Should we do it the same time? Zero all of it out. Okay, so within the main panel right here, what I'm going to do is game object create empty. I'm going to drag it into the panel. I'm going to go to a little gear. I'm going to hit reset, and we'll see that this empty game object is 100% centered inside of the panel. It's at zero zero zero, and I'm going to call this uh, lower left anchor. Okay. And this is going to be the anchor. It's going to anchor these buttons to the lower left part of the screen. So I'm going to go up to um, Component, NGUI. Um, can't remember where this is. Okay. And I'm going to go down to UI and then Anchor. Okay. First things first, I'm going to drag the panel into there. Okay, the panel that it's in. Everything's inside of there. And I want it to be lower left. So I'm going to go bottom left, and you'll see now that it moved the anchor down to the bottom left. And then I'm going to left drag my buttons into both of them into that anchor. Okay, I'm going to select both of them. I like to hold down control when I'm working with it, and this allows me to do a snapping. And basically, I'm just moving them where I want them. So there, that's kind of where I want them. Cool thing about how this works is, is the anchor will hold them in this left quadrant. But inside of it, since I've made them children of the parent, I can kind of move them around and offset them how I like from the, from that left corner. So they can be individually moved apart from each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I've dragged panel container into there, and I've child of them in. Okay, so when I hit play now, we'll see the buttons doing their button actions. And we're going to scale down and the buttons are maintaining their offset. And then uh, it's pretty cool. We're going to go to like a more narrow and you'll see that they offset. They just skip right on over. And then if I go to a really Big wide resolution. Let's try this. They stay offset. 
they scale um, perfectly with it. So we'll go back down to a really tiny, maybe a little 400, maybe 4 by 480. So even when the aspect ratio changes and it goes more widescreen, they stay. So let's go back to something reasonable. I usually work at 800 by 480 as my default because it's really the most common size um, for Android resolutions. So there we go, lower left anchor. So let's go in and create game object, create empty, drag it into the panel, reset it so everything's zeroed, and we'll call this, uh, let's go to the upper right anchor, the other extreme up there in the corner. Component in GUI, UI, and attach an anchor. We'll drag the panel in. Let's say we want this to be top right. So the anchor has moved up there to the top right area. Okay. And for the top right, let's say we want to put the camera button up there, a pause button, and maybe a respawn button. So let's create a few things. Create a widget. We're going to use that in game HUD. We're going to create buttons. And let's, uh, let's create the pause button. And then let's go in and create a respawn button. Okay. And I'm going to drag it out because it parented into that other button. So, alright. This is our respawn button. And this will be our pause button. And uh, we need to go and fix these because for some odd reason they've come in scaled funky again. So I'm just going to make sure they're square. There we go. Let's close the widget box since we've created the widgets we want. And then let's space them a little. And that's fine. I'm going to select both of them and kind of drag them up where I want them in my HUD. Okay? And we have our anchor set up, so let's just drag them into it. So now we have the upper right anchor in the top right corner. So there's our buttons being nifty and working as they should. Let's make sure they stay where they're supposed to when we scale down. And they've shifted and they scale down. And then let's go up to some bigger, wider there's the standard. There's a little more widescreen, very common Android resolution. There. And then let's see if we can get the 1280 to fit. And then another common, very common Android tablet resolution. So we can go from 1280 to 800, 1024 to 600, 800 by 480, all the way down to what the original what iPhone 3GS was. Some of the really old Android devices. And everything is scaling nicely, and you can literally watch it shift in the viewport as it's anchoring and moving everything. So this is uh, oh, portrait mode, not going to work. Oh, by the way, the anchoring works the same way in portrait mode, but this is just demoing um, <clears throat> landscape. So basically, that's how you would create a HUD in UI. Um, let's check out the draw calls on it. Yep, draw calls one, and we have four elements on here. We could just keep adding and adding and, and adding things into this um, texture here, and it would just keep you know atlasing them all into the same one and keep the draw call for our HUD elements here one draw call. So no waste of draw calls on your UI, and everything anchors nicely and supports different resolutions and different aspect ratios. So. Hopefully this helps some of you on your mobile development for tablets and mobile phones and Android and iOS.